We're killing ourselves trying to be perfect, and it's making us insane. In this day and age, it's impossible to be a good mom. Screw it. Let's yeah. be bad moms. Oh, I'm in. The genesis of the movie was looking at our wives' lives. We're both dads, and our wives are moms. And uh, seeing how intense a world it was and how ripe it was for comedy. And so we figured it was, uh, we've written our share of exactly what you said, guys having a good time. And we figured, also we went to enough like uh, mom events that got a little off the rails that were like, oh, this is like, we're not actually entirely making this up. This is something that actually happens. You know, the three martini play date or whatever it is. Uh, not my wife, by the way. She's very well behaved, but other moms, of course. Uh, but we just thought it was, like a, it was a world full of really intense social interactions, and it was just a world that was like sort of hadn't been, in our minds, done to the to the nth degree yet. And so we thought we could. To bad moms. To bad moms. Oh. Mm. I love you guys. Mm. Oh, dude. We love you. We just so met Kiki. The joke of the movie is, of course, they're not really bad moms. They're they're moms who work way, way too hard and never get a break, and they get a little bit of break. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say that that's the fun of the movie, is like you get to go for two hours and maybe experience things vicariously that you don't get to do in your regular life. I think mo good movies, movies that we love always do that. They take you on this kind of journey to this thing that you can't maybe actually do because you're not a criminal or you're not a whatever, you're not a spy, and they, they put you in this world that you'd sort of maybe like to inhabit. And uh, so you get to live vicariously through the people on screen. And I think they ha those women have a pretty good time. I think if, the, if real women actually did what happens in this movie, they'd be in jail. But uh, the fun of the movie is getting to live that out and then, of course, returning back to a, a safer, happier place. Yeah. So, so John may have said this, but we didn't so much as write this script as listen to our wives and the moms around us and write down what they were saying. And so really a lot of it is just observing the moms around us and putting it into a movie. And I have to say, you're talking about sort of cutting loose. I know my wife would love to cut loose every day, but there's so much responsibility placed on her that eventually she gets to the end of the day and it's like midnight and she's got to go to bed. And it's that frustration of not getting to do anything that she wants all day. And so this movie is what if she got to just like do whatever the hell she wanted. I just don't know how you leave your kids all day and go to work. Oh, yeah, but I also need things like money. Right. Mm. I'll see you guys later. just love how hard she works. Such a hard worker. I just said that, Vicky. I think there are less pressures and less expectations on fathers. It seems like if you show up at an occasional soccer game, you're a hero for being there. But moms sort of have to be at every soccer game and make sure they brought the treats and make sure the kids are on time, make sure they have all the gear and that they have the shin pads. And there's just a lot that I, f I feel like our society has placed a lot more pressure on moms to be perfect, that dads, uh, for right or wrong, probably for wrong, are just expected to be at work and occasionally show up. But moms are expe expected to I, do everything. I personally feel like I get a lot more plaudits for doing very little. And my wife does a lot and doesn't get you any. You do very little, too. And I do very little, <laughs> consciously. Uh, no, but I think there's, I think that's, uh, I, we could get into like a really deep philosophical conversation <laughs> as to why it is, but the truth, whatever, whatever cause you want to point to, it, it, it is reality that moms are held to a far higher standard. And it's not dads. fair. Yeah. This is a list of the toxic ingredients that are absolutely banned from the bake sale. No BPA, no MSG, no BHA, no BHT, plus no soy, no sesame, and of course no nuts or eggs or milk or butter or salt or sugar or wheat. You sort of find your roles. It's, I, I hate to liken it to a marriage, but you sort of figure out what you, what you like to do. And in some ways, now that we've done a couple, like, I don't know how one person does this job. Like, we're exhausted. We're two people, and we're, like, exhausted every day. And it feels like the, we, I wish I had a third partner. Like, there's so much to be done every day. Um, we've also we've been working together for 13 years now or something like that. So uh, there is a shorthand that we've developed. We sort of, you know, kind of finish each other's sentences not really because we know each other that well, but because we don't want the other person to, to finish what he's thinking and you want to jump in. Um, but we do, but I think, I think we do know each other really well and know creatively what we want. So um, if there's an issue on set or if an actor needs some direction or we're talking about the camera, both of us will probably have the same uh, input or the same answer or the same opinion on what's happening. So I think it... Because we've been together so long, it kind of runs pretty smoothly. It's also true that like most good directors, most directors that we work with usually have like a creative partner in some way. Usually it's a producer or a writer or someone on set that they kind of bounce ideas off of. So they aren't necessarily co-directing, but it's very hard sitting alone in that chair and just making a thousand decisions without having anyone to be like, hey, is that weird? Or usually directors turn to somebody, right? There's usually, they're not like totally alone in the process. So it's in some ways we just have that as, a, as built in.